one to fear, Prime. There is a darkness coming. threats from both your past and future uh, yeah. it was all a you've never faced anything like this Let them come. This can't be real. This can't be real. Oh, okay, it's real. And if you don't know. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my Transformers Rise of the Beast trailer video. This is gonna be Transformers doing their version of Beast Wars. Beast Wars. A lot of you having flashbacks to your childhood, a lot of Easter eggs here, so I'll explain what's going on because they're combining some aspects of the Beast Wars lore with what they've already done in the newer Transformers movies like Transformers Bumblebee. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will do more videos for the movie if we get more footage, more details about what's actually going on with the future of the Transformers films. But it just seems like based on the designs of the Transformers, they're actually carrying forward in the Bumblebee timeline. And this is set in the 90s, so just about a decade after the events of the Bumblebee film. And that's why Bumblebee Optimus Prime looked the exact same that they did in that previous movie. Here's where they start to combine stuff, because obviously you have the Maximals and the Predacons interacting with the modern day Transformers. Originally during the Beast Wars cartoon, they explained that it was sort of like a redesign of the entire toy line, and they were meant to be the descendants of the original Autobots and Decepticons. Some of you also probably detected the Easter egg for the three main groups in the title scene too. So in the title of the trailer, the logo in the Transformers word flips three times. First, it's the traditional Autobots to represent their characters in the present day of the movie in the 90s. This is the Maximals logo from the Beast Wars TV series, and this is the Terracons logo, who are going to be like the villains of the film. So like this main character is Optimus Primal, and he's the descendant of Optimus Prime, and he uses that name as a way to honor the original Optimus Prime, but they're together in the same scenes during this movie. There was a later cartoon that was meant to be a sequel to Beast Wars called Beast Machines, which explained the process by which the Autobots and the Decepticons evolved into these forms, the Maximals and the Predacons. They call that the Great Upgrade, and it was meant to be like a big transformation of their species. But the whole idea with Transformers they've established previously in the lore is that when they go to new planets, they try to adapt to whatever forms are most common there, which is why they transform into cars when they land on planet Earth. The way they explain that Great Upgrade during the Beast Wars cartoon is that the Energon was so rich on the planet that they went to is that they couldn't stay in their traditional Transformers forms for that long and had to change into beasts. What it seems like they've done here, though, is that they're explaining that these versions of the Beast Wars characters are actually just previous versions of the Transformers characters that were on Earth long before this. So it's their way of doing all the animal-themed Transformers, but also incorporating some of the Terracons, which includes some of the Dinobots characters, which is another huge cut for the classic Transformers cartoons. They kind of did a version of those characters during the Michael Bay films, but the whole idea with this new line of Transformers continuity, starting with the Bumblebee movie, is that Michael Bay isn't involved with any of it. So it's kind of like a soft reboot of the Transformers franchise. But the Terracons are meant to be a different group of Decepticons that sort of broke off and they transform into monsters specifically and act as their own separate group. They were featured during the Dinobots story arc back during Gen 1 Transformers. Magnus, look! I've never seen Decepticons as vicious as those monstrous terror guns. Lucky we have the Technobots! Yeah, but those high-tech heroes are in for one horrific battle. Out of monstrous Terracon beasts comes the incredible Abominus, the battle of fearless and futuristic Computron. The Transformers! Ah! 
So the bringing together the Beast Wars cartoon with their modern day Bumblebee timeline continuity, which is why all the characters are able to interact together, instead of them being the descendants of the original Transformers. Some of the previous continuity they're carrying forward, like you have Optimus Prime talking to Optimal Primal, who's obviously the gorilla. His design is meant to be an Easter egg for King Kong. But previously they've explained the whole concept of the Primes. Optimus Primal is one of the other Primes, like Optimus Prime. So during this moment in the trailer where they meet each other, it seems like they have a bit of a standoff. It's sort of a standoff of the Primes, two leaders, obviously on the same side, that come to terms like, oh, we need to help each other because of this coming darkness. The coming darkness that they talk about in the trailer, the big fights that you see later when things escalate, are probably the terror cons. Optimus Primal is going to be voiced by Ron Perlman. You know him from like a thousand other things. I know people will be asking questions about Megatron because there was a version of Megatron during Beast Wars, but it was meant to be the descendant of the original Megatron. He was a Tyrannosaurus Rex and he was just using the name as a way to honor the previous one. So they'll streamline some of that continuity so that it makes sense for the actual films. This is what Optimus Primal looks like in his robot mode, wielding these two swords. He's meant to be really, really big. Most of the way a lot of these Beast Wars characters work are meant to be Easter eggs for that original cartoon. The orange and black tow truck is named Battle Trap. There was a version of a duocon from the Gen 1 Transformers named Battle Trap, but I think they might just be using the name for this version of the character. He's meant to be one of the members of this new faction, the Terracons, that Optimus Primal is talking about when he mentions the coming darkness. RC and Willjack are back. They made a brief appearance during the Bumblebee movie. Now she's transforming into a red and white motorcycle. The VW bus is Willjack. Not sure what's happening in this wide shot here, but it's probably them just exploring more of the lore and Optimus Primal explaining more about what's coming. More about the Terracons and they use it for another big info dump. The giant cheetah here running with Bumblebee is Cheetor. It gives you a good idea of the scale. Like I said, Bumblebee keeping his same Camaro form from the Bumblebee movie just to help you with the timeline. Like, oh, this is part of the same continuity, just a little bit of time has gone by. They kind of tease this movie at the end of the first Bumblebee movie when he met up with Optimus Prime. This is meant to be Cheetor's robot mode. He has those Wolverine looking claws. This giant Falcon Transformer is one of the Maximals called Arazor, voiced by Michelle Yeoh. The big rhinoceros is named Rhinox, who's voiced by David Sobolov. Then I think we all believe that this is meant to be Mirage because of the way he uses his ability, creating a bunch of copies of the Porsche form that he takes. He's another classic Gen 1 Transformer, but I believe he was an F1 car back in the 1980s. This other new character grabbing Bumblebee here isn't meant to be Nemesis Prime. This is actually a version of Scourge voiced by Peter Dinklage. He's the leader of the Terracons during this, this other dark faction that's coming to take them all. His other form is this road warrior looking semi truck. Like they want to give him this dark Optimus Prime vibe. There actually was an evil clone version of Optimus Prime during the Robots in Disguise cartoon. This is another one of the Terracons called Nightbird. There was a Gen 1 Nightbird that was a ninja built for Dr. Fujiyama. In the movie, she transforms into a black sports car with the purple hubcaps. During the big battle scenes, there's a bunch of really quick blink and you'll miss it transformers in the background, like really tiny ones. Might just wind up being cannon fodder for a lot of the big action scenes. Even though Haley Steinfeld's character doesn't appear anywhere during this, she could always come back into the franchise. I don't know if she's supposed to have a cameo during the film at all, just because she's got so much stuff going on in the Marvel Universe now. But it sounds like what they're trying to say is that since the events of the first film, the Beast Wars characters have awakened like they've been in hibernation for millions of years. And whatever caused them to be awakened also alerted the Terracons, and the Terracons are the ones that are coming to planet Earth. But if you spotted any other Easter eggs in the trailer or any other big Transformers characters that I didn't talk about that you have questions about, just write it below in the comments. We'll get a couple more trailers early next year. The next real big thing that's coming up is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with Kang. There'll be a bunch more trailers for that in the next couple of weeks because the movie's coming out in February. It's deceptively quiet right now. Like there's a bunch of chaos happening with DC movies, but there is a bunch of big movie related stuff coming up between Marvel, DC in the early part of next year. The Transformers Rise of the Beast movie isn't coming out till summer, so it's going to be a little while before that hits. Everyone click here for my Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer video and click here for my Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.